called Good Morning, Good Afternoon, or Good Evening, depending on what time you're watching this. It's another episode of Rock Hill Video. My disclaimer in the beginning always is, when we have our guests on our show, it, it doesn't matter uh, their opinion, feelings on anything. We always want everybody to feel comfortable on our show. This isn't a place to bash or praise anyone. I uh, went Rock Hill, South Carolina, like I said. I went to Winthrop University, and my degree was in mass communication with a concentration in journalism. So I, I find it to be very, very important that when you bring someone on, that they feel comfortable to talk about the issues and there's no making fun of anybody, no putting anybody down, there's enough stations that do that and that's not how we do things here. Even when we've had debates before, we've had two people from totally different opposite sides on things and it's always been a very civil uh, conversation that's been educational and fun and that's how we try to make it uh, here on our station. So today is Monday, October 25th, 2021, a little after 4 p.m. Today we have on uh, Rock Hill City Council member, uh, John Black III. So John, thank you for coming on our show. So John is up for re-election, so we just wanted to bring him on here, you know, so you can get to know him a little bit uh, and just see what his vision is uh, for Rock Hill. But um, he is actually from Rock Hill originally, so how long have you lived here for? Since I, I've lived my whole life here. Right. I moved away, uh, I'm, I too, as a graduate from Winthrop. Oh. But I moved away um, shortly after graduation from college and worked um, um, Columbia, Aiken, different way, uh, different places. Traveled some, but but um, found a love of my life and fought to get back. So I've pretty much been here all my life. Okay, minus a few years. So you've definitely seen a lot of changes. Absolutely. Okay, what's some of the biggest changes you've seen in Rock Hill? Uh, I mean, just, surely just the growth, uh, right? I mean. Um, you know, I just remember I grew up over on the Ebenezer side of town, uh, Grady Drive, and and when we first moved out there, when I was in elementary school, I thought we were moving to the to the country. <laughs> um, so I saw all that Hurlong corridor, um, you know, grow and expand, and so just just the growth everywhere. Okay. Anything specific you're looking to see in the future of Rock Hill, the next five, ten, fifteen, or whatever years? No, you know, I think. Um, you know, I think at this point, uh, being a, I, I call it a suburb of Charlotte, North Carolina, you know, one thing when I ran for office is what I didn't want to see is I didn't want to see Rock Hill become the next Atlanta, Gwinnett County. I did not want to see um, Charlotte grow so much that Rock Hill becomes a bedroom community and, and it loses its identity. And it's just, it, it's just a, a, a bedroom community. Um, and I thought, you know, revitalizing downtown uh, would be um, hugely important to, to, to have its identity for Rock Hill to, to be its own, to have its own name. And so, you know, I think continued growth in downtown, you know, obviously it's cheaper infrastructure wise um, to grow within. Uh, you probably heard that before. A lot of people say grow within. So, hmm. you know, um, you know, revitalize that downtown. That was something I wanted to do when I, when I ran um, in 2014 was the first time. Um, okay. 2010, excuse me, 2010. And so uh, made a lot of progress, uh, a lot of headway, and I think that's something that over the next several years is to really m monitor that growth now that Charlotte's really taken off, but, but you gotta you know, grow in the way we wanna grow, manage that growth. Okay, yeah, grow within. I've, I've noticed a lot of people that I, you know, whether it be on Facebook or just conversations, they want more stuff to be in Rock Hill, that way they don't have to go anywhere else. That's right. And I guess that's what you mean by grow within. Yeah, I mean, having a core, lively downtown, um, where you have you know mixed use, you got residents as you see the apartment complexes are coming up down there. So when you have people there, well then restaurants come and then shops want to come. So having a destination, a downtown that identifies Rock Hill as Rock Hill versus you know all these sprawled communities that all they do is get on cell needs and commute to Charlotte. Right. Okay. Uh, before we start getting more into the po political side, I think it's important for people you know to, to know who you are. So what would you like to share about whether it be uh, family life, your career, hobbies, anything you want to share about yourself? Yeah, so um, like I said, grew up in Rock Hill. Um, um, I, I'm the great, 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 great grandson of Alexander Templeton Black, who is considered the founding father of Rock Hill. Oh. Um, so um, Black Street was named after my family, and, and so when, um, and I'm not to get into this um, very much, but for the most part, he laid out the Main Street, um, Black Street, which then was Church Street, so anyway, with that kind of history, my grandmother, who, who um, lived three months shy of a hundred, um, grew up in, she lived in Orlando most of her life, but she was passionate about Rock Hill. She instilled in me 
the value of the black name and the importance of giving back to your community and really, um, you know, being proud of where you come from. So that really just really inspired me to try to make Rock Hill better. Um, so that's the inspiration of council just from the deep roots of Rock Hill, my family name and the history there. Um, as far as family, I got, uh, got four children, um, three girls and a boy. I got uh, a daughter at William & Mary playing volleyball. I have uh, another daughter at Northwestern, volleyball player as well. I have a son at Saluda Trail, plays football, baseball, basketball, whatever he can get his hands on. And I have a daughter in elementary school, Charlie. Um, so I always say I have one in about every, I got it all covered. College, <laughs> high school, middle school, and elementary school. Okay. Um, enjoy outdoors, got some family property that I enjoy being outdoors and um, doing things, but mostly chasing kids with sporting events. They're, they're big into sports. Got it, yeah, absolutely. My brother with, uh, him and his wife have three kids, so they're always taking somebody somewhere for something. <laughs> Vastly changed. Somebody, what's changed is the way sports, you know, the, the, the parks and recs don't do a lot of the sports as much as they did it when I grew up. So chasing kids and I used to travel is crazy. You know, when I traveled for sports, it was going to Leslie. <laughs> or, or, you know, Dutch McQueen, but of course it wasn't there, but now they're going to Texas and Atlanta and wherever, so. Yeah, kind of like Manchester, the, the soccer field, That's people correct. from all over the country, from what I gather, maybe even the world are coming to play soccer. Absolutely. There. Got it. Now, you represent uh, Ward 4. Uh, what is the area that I cover? So, I like to call it the uh, Herlong India Hook Corridor. So, if you take Eastview Road all the way out, McConnell, so to speak, cross over, go all the way down um, Herlong, cross over it keep on going on Indy Hook all the way out to Laurel Creek, north. So airport all around this area. So anything in the city, I call it the Herlong Indy Hook Corridor North. Okay. And uh, what do you like about this area? Anything specific going on you want to share with the viewers? Um, obviously, I think, uh, you know, I, I would say my ward is, um, I say, a little bit newer. I say, you know, as Rock Hill grew, um, you know, it started growing on this side a good bit. Um, and so... Some of the challenges around the inner cities we don't have, you know, stormwater problems, you know, a lot of that was developed before they even had stormwater um, requirements. Uh, you know, all the neighborhoods around here usually have stormwater retention ponds or they have things. So it is a little bit newer type neighborhood. So some of the, the issues aren't quite the same as other parts of the city. Um, but um, a lot of great neighborhoods, you know, um, good, good, hardworking people. Um, and um, so, uh, yeah, that's... Okay. Anything specific about the future you want to see in the, in the Ward 4? Um, you know, I think uh, one thing, I, you know, we talked about Manchester earlier, and I think, you know, Rock Hill's been very good at developing a niche of the sports tourism. And um, so b between Manchester, the, the biking facilities out at um, Riverwalk, or whether it be, um, you know, the indoor sports facility now, you know, having a regional type park on, on this side of town in my ward, I think would be nice for the residents of this area. Um, you know, um, that's a, a big thing that I'd like to see at some point. Um, always roads, you know. <laughs> right. Improving roads, infrastructure is, is greatly Im and important. That's probably the one of the number one complaints I get is um, most time, you know, roads. Okay. Now, we have the, the obviously an NFL football team, the Carolina Panthers. They do play in Charlotte, which is North Carolina, yet their training camp is coming to Rock Hill. That's uh, any specific thoughts on that or ideas you wanted to share with us about, about to have that happen in the next couple of years? You know, I just thought it was a you know, perfect fit uh, when the mayor reached out to them when they were said they were looking and it just snowballed. And, um, you know, with Rock Hill being known, I think, I think our PRT department, our sports tourism is a niche that we've fallen into that is just top notch, whether it's the soccer you mentioned uh, or the biking. Um, so adding, you know, this, this uh, practice facility at the, the headquarters, um, was, a, I think, a great, great um, accomplishment for Rock Hill. Uh, and I, I'm, it's not just that the team is here. I think the headquarters is one thing. So, you know, I think, you know, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, when we were a textile, uh, downtown textile town, when textiles went away, Rock Hill almost fell apart downtown. Mm -hmm. So you can't, I don't think you focus on any one type of industry. You want to diversify your type of portfolio. And we have a lot of distribution, which we try to gain more manufacturing and more other businesses, but to have a corporate headquarters here uh, hmm. on a large organization is one thing that really attracted um, us very much. And uh, so not only is the Panther facility going to be here, but you have on that site, his David Tepper's um, vision is to have 
several corporate headquarters move here. So it's going to be a, basically a corporate business park on top of the Panther facility and corporate headquarters. Wow. So that's what I've been excited about as anything else is actually having those other corporate headquarters maybe locating in Rock Hill. Okay. And for what I get, that's going to be around the Anderson Road, 742 North, Manchester, Soccer Fields, and Movie Theater, Dave Lyle area. That's right. It's on the uh, old Hutchison, old Rock Hill people, old Hutchison place, which uh, kind of kind of sandwiched between Eden Terrace, a little bit of Dave Lyle, Mount Gallant, and, um, and the Interstate 77. So about 200 acres. Okay. And the Panther site's only going to take about, I don't know, maybe 40? 40 acres of that 200 acres, maybe. Oh, okay. I may be a little off there, but it's, it's a smaller part of the overall development that's going to be a, a, a big um, uh, corporate business park with a hotel and other things. Oh, hotel, okay. Yes. yes. So roughly about a fourth. Okay, got it. Um, now, I know uh, since March of, uh, you know, what, 2020 now, you know, we've had the, 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 the pandemic, COVID-19, et cetera, and everyone has their different opinions. What would you like to share with the viewers on ways people can be safe and try to get everybody to feel more comfortable with things? Well, you know, my opinion is, um, you know, it's a, it's a personal responsibility that, that each individual must do, each individual or family must do what they've got to do to protect themselves. Um, you know, I always say government can't be all things to all people. And um, so um, I, I think whether you like mandates, mask mandates or not, whether you want to wear a mask or not, I think, you know, you as an individual or as a family, you, you need to do, take the measures you want to protect yourself. Um, so, um, you know, it's just something that you, you kind of got to get through and whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, you got to kind of get the herd immunity. And I think there's always going to be strands out there that are going to pop up. I don't know if this is going to end up being something like the flu that's always around. I don't know. But, um, you know, from a, from a government side, you know, you, you just can't, it, it's, government can't fix that. Got it. Um, in my opinion, I think you know whether no matter what side of the fence you like you land on, you know um, you got to take personal responsibility, do what you can do to protect yourself. Okay. Any uh, specific advice you could have for say small businesses in the area, how we can continue to grow, you know, economically to where they're not struggling? Yeah. Uh, you know, well, uh, when I when I ran, the other thing I wanted to make sure work the first time was to be a business friendly community, um, and uh, you know, I think we've done a decent job. We've improved our planning department and our process for sometimes the, the new business opening, somebody that might take advantage of our open for business program. Okay. And it's good for new business. So you come and meet with the planning department um, and they walk you, handhold you through the process. Um, you know, I'd love to see it more of a concierge type process where you get a lot more handholding. But but what you find is there's a lot of business people that open up and, and they just pop into a place. Maybe it was another business before and they get started. And, and, and really, a lot of those businesses just want government out of their, out of their hair, right? Just get out of the way and let me, let me do my job. Um, but running a small business, um, is, you know, it's the backbone of not only our city, but the, the country, really, small businesses. But running a small business, as anybody would probably know, is, is very difficult, you know. Um, <laughs> you know somebody that has a trade or something that they're really good at to turn it into a business um, that survives is really, really tough sometimes. So they have enough to worry about. Um, sometimes government's overreaching, but I think there's a balance there where um, we can provide um, some support if we can, whether it be um, years ago when we were trying to get them to change sign ordinances, we offered support, facade grants, we've done some of that in the past. Um, and recently in regards to COVID, we actually, um, got some money and, and, and put some up for business assistance for utility bills or stuff like that, that we okay. actually have a, um, you know, have a hand in, you know, it's, I, I kind of believe you got to keep the public sector and private sector a little bit separate. Um, government can't fix everything in the private sector too, but, okay. um, any, any assistance is always good. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty much, that was pretty much my next question. You already answered it. Basically how the, uh, council can work with the private sector to succeed. Yeah. I, I think the, uh, the old, the old mayor used to always say this, we, if government can prime the pump, right? So prime the pump, get out of the way. So if there's little programs like, you know, downtown when it was struggling to, to offer businesses to come down there. Well, you know, anything you could do to help, you know, rent assistance or maybe facade grants because you, 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 lease a new space where you got expenses to change your signage and all the facades and 
So little things like that we, we've been able to do to help okay. assistant. Um, um, you know, um, what's tough is, you know, having a program citywide for small businesses to, to, to hand out money in some kind of grant form. You know, money comes from us, the people. And so, um, and then some people say, well, why don't you help these people that are struggling? Well, you got to remember, the only way government help can help those that are struggling is to take money from people who sometimes are struggling. <laughs> and so it, it's just, it's a, sometimes it's a, a difficult thing for government to get too entangled in the private sector. Um, so sometimes it's best to just get out of the way, <laughs> let them do their job. Okay. Now I'm sure you've noticed, that, you know, because you've obviously, you know, born and raised here, spent most of your uh, life here, if not all of it. You know, Rock Hill's becoming a huge melting pot. You know, people from all over the country and all over the world are coming here. So it's quite a, a shift in demographics. How do you think we could all find a way to keep everyone as, as happy as possible as, as times change? Yeah, and I go back to that, you know, government can't be all things to all people. But, you know, you look at it and you go, um, you know, offering consistency within the city. Um, consistency from our government leaders. Consistency in policy. Um, you know, some kind of predictability, I think, sometimes goes a long way in people wanting to invest here. Okay. Um, you know, if it's erratic and going all over the place, I deal in stock. I'm, I'm an uh, investment advisor, so I, huh. I watch the market. And, and um, you know, if something's reasonable and predictable, you know, things usually go pretty smooth. But so I think from our government leaders, from, the, from what's being done out there, some consistency and, and is, is very helpful um, because it makes it attractive, right, for businesses to locate here, people want to come here. The other thing is, you know, clean city. Um, one that's, um, you know, has great amenities, parks, uh, makes it livable. You know, it, it attracts people that want to come here. Uh, and then companies want to invest here because people like to be here and they want to move where there is talent and where there is uh, people that could to, to help their workforce. So it, it's all like a, a, a vicious cycle, right? So I think you got to kind of do a little bit of everything um, to, to make this a, a very livable community that people want to uh, move to. Okay. And something I've noticed in the past few is a lot of retirement communities are popping up, everything, you know, retirement communities, assisted living, memory care, or you see a lot of small uh, caregiver units um, that send out people. So I feel with as many people coming here, obviously the more people come here, the more elderly people are going to have, and right. a lot of people are retiring here as opposed to, say, going to Florida or somewhere else. So to me, that one of the things I've been uh, concerned with is uh, just people who are going to need that type of care as they get older, whether they, you know, we do the Alzheimer's walk every year in Rock Hill, or they have a stroke, and it's very costly to live in a lot of these um, homes, and just getting aid, period, is costly. What, what's something, you know, what are your thoughts on that? What, what can we do? Yeah, you know, we, we've actually already seen that um, from the developers that are wanting to come and locate here. Um, you know, downtown especially, we've seen a lot of people that want to do these age-restricted communities, um, age-restricted you know, apartments or condos. Um, so I think with the change in demographics, you're right. I think this change in demographics, you are moving towards, um, you know, I say an elderly population and you got to care for them. Um, you know, uh, I think a couple of proposals with downtown, one was supposed to be a, um, and I think they've moved away from it, but a, um, a, a multi-care facility where you could go in at 55 and then you've got your, you know, I think you'll see a lot of that. But the other thing is that it's been, um, that we've seen a lot of and that developers are coming to us to, instead of having these neighborhoods with, um, you know, half million dollar houses, people want the downsize. People are wanting um, smaller yards, um, patio home type things, uh, more attached type development um, maybe smaller homes. Um, they like to go and travel, and so, so whether they need more higher level skilled care, or whether they're just retirees that want to downsize, it's, you, we've seen a definite shift already in what's being requested in the city. Um, oh, okay. And so, um, a lot of a lot of those type of developments are, are being proposed and coming. Um, even apartment living, you're seeing a lot of people that are selling out their houses wanting to live in apartments, and so, you know. I always say, hey, just just follow the demand of the market, and it, it will lead you where you need to go. And we're having to shift some stuff in our zoning code and ordinance. We've made changes and updates over the years, and um, but um, but this, that is a definite thing that we're seeing for sure. Okay. 
Now we just had a, an election last week for the mayor that was on Tuesday, October 19th. And obviously, you know, when you go and vote, there were just uh, three choices for mayor, but there was nothing else. I noticed that your re-election uh, has been postponed till the following year. What, what, what happened? Yeah, so typically when uh, we had the census, as, as everybody might know, when, when they do the census, then the new numbers come out to all the local districts and everything that requires redistricting. So that's a, a point when they get the new census numbers, we have to redraw our lines to make sure there's a one person, one vote basis of what this country's founded on, right? So one person, one vote. And so we normally get the census numbers and the data uh, around, I say, April, May, okay. and we usually draw the lines June, July and have it ready to go. This year we did not get it until the end of September. It was delayed out of wherever it comes from, Washington, wherever it was. The numbers were delayed, so it really pushed us back. Okay. And there was no way that we could have an October election. So this council looked at all different options and decided to, to move forward with the mayor's election because it obviously it didn't matter about districts. Anybody in the city of Rock Hill votes for mayor. But the other wars that were up, um, we decided to postpone them to February. Okay. And so we, we looked at it both directions and said, okay, hey, you know, if you postpone it, you might be, we heard, disenfranchising people. Um, however, um, it, if, if we didn't postpone it, it could work the same way. We could disenfranchise people. So if you look at my ward, now that we have the numbers, we'll be voting on the, the district map tonight at council. Yeah. Um, I had to give up uh, over 800 and something uh, people from my ward. It still was the fastest growing ward of the last 10 years. Um, um, and so I had to give up a, a, a lot of people to the neighboring wards. Um, if we would have went ahead with the election in October, those 800 people, or whoever I gave up, I think I still have about a, about 100 and some over, those 700 people that I gave up to the next wards would have not been able to vote. They would have voted for potentially me, or another candidate voted for me, and then they would have changed representation come February. So oh. that, and so those people were could have been disenfranchised by not getting representation by the person they voted for. The other thing is, is one of somebody in that, that area that we gave up wanted to run for office. And the zone they were in before got rezoned into something that maybe now they can run or they couldn't run. So I think you just got to keep it is is consistent as you can for the people in the in the electors. So we chose to hold off on those elections okay. until we knew the line. So when those elections happen, everybody that um, are vote, voting for the right person will be voting for the right person. Okay, I know there's a couple, sense? a couple, yeah, of course. Yeah, there's a couple of elections I know that are going to be, uh, that will move to February of 2022. Yep, February 8th, I think. Is. Oh, February, yeah, February 8th of 2022. Tuesday, okay. Yeah, that's right. All right, John, I know we talked about a lot about yourself and uh, family, work, and politics. Just a final question. Is there anything you'd like to share that we didn't talk about or that you want people to know about you? Uh, no, I'm just, uh, you know, obviously enjoy representing the people of Rock Hill, um, not just people of Ward 4, but all of Rock Hill. Um, you know, I serve because I have, I always, I think we joked about this before we went on air, is that, you know, um, people say, oh, you're a politician. I say, well, you don't become a politician until you reach the state or national level, I, I consider myself a community servant. Okay. I really have a passion for Rock Hill and just want to do what's best for the citizens of Rock Hill and, and, and moving Rock Hill forward in a smart way. And, you know, I know there's some old time Rock Hill people along with me that have, have mentioned to me saying, hey, you know, we don't Rock Hill change. Well, you know, if your community's not growing, you're dying. And so uh, when Charlotte's hmm. growing like it is, um, you know, it's one of those things where we, we better be on the the positive end of it and affect change how we want it versus we wake up and, and it's and it's not the way we want it you know yeah it could uh, easily turn out to something that we go god what happened you know somebody asleep at the wheel so just really affecting positive change and um but it's been a it's been a great ride and i am up for a re-election for my fourth term um so much left going on in downtown and projects we got going i think i you know would, would be suited to to keep that consistency and that um, in the government and, and uh, like to represent the people of Ward 4 one more time. So. Okay. Well, thank you, John. We appreciate you yeah, coming on. Um, feel free. We'll have you back on some other time. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hope you had a good time. Thank you. Viewers, I hope you had a good time and you know got educated. Uh, please feel free to continue to check in on rockhillvideo.com as we bring more folks on to talk about the issues. And now a word from our sponsors.